what is the best way to maximize your points with the flybys and the everyday rewards programs let me share with you the tips and tricks that i do hey i'm kelly the frugal fun mom if we haven't met before i love talking all things frugal and how to maximizing getting the best bang for your buck and today this was a video request from a subscriber so thank you so much and i'm going to be talking about flybys and everyday rewards program and how to get the best points with your shop and it might be a little bit different as what you're thinking so i thought i would run through what i do and to show you a few examples and you can kind of see the logic and how it all goes because it's not traditional let me share with you for that so if you are new here on my channel i share a lot of grocery hauls and you can see as I said, I'm not very traditional and only in the past couple of weeks have I moved into let me show with you what a week's grocery haul is. And I am not a traditional one-stop shop with the little top-ups. Nope, I am go to a shop every single day, look for markdowns, look for any bargains and I kind of shop and run as I say and I kind of just run through the week and I kind of have a collection or a conglomerate of stuff and then that gets fed into the household and that gets worked into our menu plan. I do not sit there and menu plan what we're going to have and then shop to fill that. I shop and then figure out what to eat from what we have. So on the channel, previous months, you'll see like, come shop with me at Coles and I take you through a shop and they're always a small shop because we're doing week one, two, three or four for the Coles flyby spend and you'll notice that I'm only spending that amount and then that's it and people have questions about that and how it fits into everything else so that's why I've moved into doing the whole week and still it's very disjointed when people are looking at it and going where is your meat? Where is your traditional weekly bread, milk, this, 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 this? And again, we're not traditional family or a shopper in the sense of one shop just to go to the shop once. And that's what works for our family because I move around so much with work and appointments and life and family. I am forever somewhere because I just get a bit frustrated like many of you at the prices of some things so if I can get meat marked down I'm going to buy it but I try and be very strategic with my shop to make sure as I said I'm getting the best bang for my dollar so let me go through some of the tips and tricks with you and I hope that you can pick some of these up because yeah it really does help us as a family so the first thing that I do is that I actually have a master list of about 30 meals that we do eat as a family and that I know that they're the ingredients that we pretty much always will have on hand in either the fridge, freezer or pantry. So I know that at a moment's notice, there's always something that I can cook, whether I've got meat in the freezer and I just need to grab something out of the pantry. I've always got elements everywhere. So I've always got like a skeleton list, as they say, and I can always put something together. Because I shop for the markdown meats, so I've always got that cycling through. So I'll just grab it and throw it in the freezer. And then everything's kind of sitting there in ingredients. And then it just depends maybe what else we found during the week or what we're feeling or what the timeline is for how busy we are as to what kind of meals that we end up doing. I also shop this way because it helps me save money. So if I know that I've already got the meat in the freezer at a really good price, I'm just looking for that last one or two ingredients, especially if I can find it as a markdown to complete the meal. It means that I am not paying the money top dollar to the supermarket because I need that thing. I just wait for a special. I am the queen of waiting when it comes to looking for things. Some weeks we haven't had burgers for weeks and weeks and weeks because I refuse to pay $4 for the packet of burger buns. I will buy them when they're marked down and that means we have the burgers that night. 
And again, same with other meals that we have. If we're missing one or two different ingredients, then I'll wait till I find it. And then that way we just rotate through the meals. That's how we save money as well. So then my shopping ends up looking a little bit like a stockpile. So when the four week spend from Coles comes up and we have the minimum spend there, sometimes it's only two or three items because I have bought up in bulk especially if they're half price items this is where my shopping goes a little bit non-traditional because i start shopping like i'm stockpiling and i am sticking also to the rule of the minimum spend for the offer that i have so i'm playing a few different factors in there I'll first go through the pantry and see if there's any gaps of stuff. I also have a list of items in my phone that we need all the time that are not always front of mind, if that makes sense. But when I'm looking for a few little fill-in things, which I'll explain later, I'm talking alfoil, I'm talking baking paper, Ziploc bags, uh, the cream cheese, the garlic aioli sauce that we use. So stuff that we do use frequently, but not enough to kind of focus on stock control for that. So when I'm in the supermarket, I'm not paralysis by analysis, seeing all these things and then leaving the shop and going, oh, I forgot the bread because I do all the time. But I have a lot of control around what I'm going to buy and how it's going to best work for me. So if you're following along, you're probably hearing that I'm pretty strategic with the way that I plan and I shop. So not so much to the traditional, let's shop for everything. I am kind of shopping to fit pieces of the puzzle. Is it more time? Probably it is, but it works for us and it's what I enjoy. So even if you were doing a traditional shop, this method probably could still work for you, but we'll talk about how to break it down a little bit later with the um, minimum spends for the offers as well. Your strategy game plan should include the Coles and Woolworths emails. They will send you on a Monday evening at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the catalog that is going to be released and started on Wednesday. So you're going to get that nearly two days early so you can open it up and check out all the specials that are coming for that week. You can look through and I often write down what the half price specials are and any other specials to be aware of and how much they cost and what the unit price is because I track sales cycles. There are a few items that we buy. I only buy them when they're half price or when they are the standard price that I know them to be because some things are like a standard 30% off. If they ever go to 50% off, beautiful, but some things are always the same sale price all the time, like oat milk for my daughter. And I know as soon as it hits that sale price of $3.36, that's when I go and I stockpile for that week. So we've got our list of ingredients. We know what the half price specials are coming up or anything else that we need to be aware of. Next, we need to have a look at the actual offers and work out how best to use it to our advantage. Let's start first with the Coles rewards in flybys. So I'll open the Coles flyby app and have a look at what offers are there. There are a multitude of offers and you really need to read the terms and conditions to make sure that you get what you're wanting. So most of the Coles offers, it is spend so much money in one transaction to receive said amount points. Everybody's offers are always different as well as the spans and everything else. So just be aware of that. Just because people post in a Facebook group, hey, this is the latest offer, that's their offer because the supermarkets are aware of what you're buying and they're always kind of giving you a target goal to spend to. If you achieve your said spend over the four weeks, you'll probably notice that the next round of offers that come out, the required spend is just a little bit more. Then the one after that is just a little bit more. They're looking to stretch you. So this is also where you need to be strategic, which we'll again talk about later. Usually the standalone spends are because the supermarket is trying to maybe get you to shop in that week to fill in the gap between the two 
uh, four week offers, especially if they haven't had any lately, though, I've been noticing they're just pumping them out back to back to back. We used to only get like one every other month type thing. And I noticed that lately the offers are just pumping out all the time, which is where, again, you need to really be strategic and figure out who's going to get your money and how you can best shop to be rewarded. You need to also have a look at what you're prepared to do to chase the specials. If you've already done like maybe a major shop for that week because you've got a standalone offer of spend so much to get these points and you've kind of spent your money for the week, then you might need to let the next one go. Yeah, it sucks that you're not going to get the rewards, but you got to be thinking about the fact they're playing a game too. So you play the game and one of you <laughs> has to back down eventually. Is it going to be you? Or is it going to be the supermarket? Because, yeah, it's a game that someone needs to win. Let me now run you through how I do the four-week spend. So standard is spend $50 or more in one transaction every week for four weeks to get the bonus points. You asked me to spend $50 or more. So $50 is all you're going to get from me as close as I can. I have all of those lists that we talked about earlier and I'm going to make sure that I strategically plan my shopping to make sure that I don't spend any more than I need to. I go in with all of my lists, but the first thing that I do is I have a look for any markdowns that are in the shop because meat is expensive and if I can save money, then that's what's going to streamline me first into the $50 spend. So I'll grab whatever I can and look at whatever savings I have and then work out how much all of that meat is and then deduct from $50 and go, right, what do I have left to spend? Then second on my list, what are the half price specials for that week and how many do I need to push me over? I've spent my $50, so I will just go and pay and check out and then that'll be my shop done for the week. I will repeat the exact same process for weeks two, three, and four. So you go in there, look for any markdowns, then any half price specials. If we have none of those, or if we still have some money that we need to finish that $50 spend, I'll have a look at my lists and have a look at anything that is like the everyday items that we need to help stockpile. If we get to a week and we are out of markdowns and we're out of half price specials, that's when I look at the everyday low prices with our everyday items like rice, margarine, um, shelf stable things. That's when I start stockpiling those things and then that helps fill up that $50 spend for the week. Please be aware that week one of the Coles four-week spends is usually 10 days long. It's not a standard week. It's a little bit longer and some people do get tricked into it because they'll shop their standard, say, Monday shop and then they'll go back the following Monday and go, oh, I'm doing week two. It's still within that sort of 10 days. It will be listed as a date on the terms and conditions, so just make sure that you read that and pay attention to it. Now let's have a look at the Woolworths Everyday Rewards Program. Very similar to the Coles, the points are exactly the same. However, with their rewards, there's a few little things that you need to be aware of. So a lot of their spends lately are always a two-week spend. And lately I've been noticing that their offers are spend so much money in one or more shops for you to qualify for the points. So you don't have to spend the whole amount in one shop. You can spend a little bit Monday, a little bit Tuesday, a little bit Wednesday, as long as by the end of the week, you have accumulated the minimum amount spent that they've asked for, you will get the points when the deal has finished. I feel that this is where Woolworths has the advantage over Coles in this area. They also have boosters where you can get bonus points for said items. So have a look at those because these are the items that you probably have already previously bought and make sure that they're either on special that week 
or they're just one of the everyday pricing that they have. For example, we get the offers a lot for lamingtons and also the broccoli and cauliflower. They're the same price every single week, so I'm more than happy to pick them up and stockpile those and get the bonus points because we are going to be buying them anyway. For anything else, I only buy them if they're on special. We sometimes get an offer for the chicken Kievs. Unless they're on sale for $1.50, then I don't get them, even if they do have bonus points. The only downfall with the boosters, that's what they call them, is they need to be activated two hours before you go shopping. The Coles ones, they're an instant activation. And also the thing with the Coles rewards is if you forget to hit activate on a Coles four-week spend, on your receipt, it will have there don't forget to go and activate this offer by this date for you to start your Coles four-week spend. So it's kind of like a, oh, you forgot to do this thing. We still want you in our program. Let's go. If with the Woolworths one, you don't activate it before you do your shop, you miss out. I've been noticing lately that a lot of the Coles and the Woolworths rewards are running kind of simultaneously. So this is when I will use one offer from Coles and one from Woolworths to complete my shop. So I'll go to Coles and I will spend the minimum amount possible and then I'll move to Woolworths and spend the minimal amount possible there to complete the offers that we need. I have my lists as I say. So what I'll do is, like I said, mark down shopping, half price rewards, and then everyday items. If I get to the two and my $50 spend is finished, then we're done and we move to Woolworths and we start on our everyday rewards. We still might need bread, milk, Ziploc bags, whatever it is, because a lot of the prices at Woolworths are the same as Coles. Again, I have price tracked everything in my price book so I know what the prices are. If the price is just so crazy at Woolworths, then what I do is I don't buy it there and I'll move it onto the list for Coles to pick it up when I'm next there so I can save the money. It's not always about chasing points, it is always about the money. So I'll have my list and if I don't get to all of my everyday items, as I say, then that's it for the week, we're done and we need to wait for the following week to be able to pick it up. I don't just buy stuff because it was on my list, I wait because I've stockpiled enough stuff that I should have things in the house to last me. So I'm not always in a hurry and needing to buy those things because I'm strategic with how I shop and I make sure that I'm spending only what I need to do. After I've done those two offers, if there's still things that I need, then this is where sometimes I'll go shopping at Foodland or Audi and pick up some extra things. Of course, during the week, I'm always at a Coles or Woolworths. So if I see extra markdown stuff, I'm just going to pick it up because it is saving me money. So ultimately, I have spent a little bit extra. However, it's kind of different because it's not within that one spend. So I'm doing the bare minimum, like check, and then moving on. And then I happen to be about the next day to get some markdown stuff. But I just kind of look at that, that that's helping to stockpile and save me money. Some people say I end up spending more money this way, but when it comes also to times like school holidays, I'm not out and about very often. Lately, I haven't been well, so I'm not out and about. And guess what? The meat that is in our fridge and freezer and stockpile is such a blessing to us right now. I've spent the money early on to make sure that we have some food security because I'm not able to get out and about. And so spending previously for that means that we've been able to save now and I'm not having to go to the shop and buy things because we need things. We have everything here that we need.
Hope that this video has really helped you guys to be able to save some money, get the best bang for your buck and work out where the rewards are for you. Is loyalty worth it or not? Is it worth chasing the specials? Only you can determine that. In South Australia, we're lucky, as I've mentioned before, to have Foodland and Audi, as well as independent fruit and veg shops, which is often cheaper than the major supermarkets. And we have a shop too called NQR, or Not Quite Right, which I know is in Victoria as well and it's basically just really cheap snack stuff I know there's other discount shops around in other states and stuff so yeah look at what you need to buy and where and shop as strategically as you can it might take you a little bit of time effort and money to sort of start this and get a little bit of stockpile and get a little bit of ahead of the sales cycle but I promise you that it is totally worth it in the end to make sure that you are winning the game and getting the best bang for your buck and being rewarded as well so I really really hope this video helps you if you have any questions please leave them down below and if you have any tips or tricks again please leave them down below because I really do feel that we can learn from each other and also join Facebook groups there's a we love flybys group there's a everyday rewards enthusiasm Facebook group people in there have so many good tips and tricks and offers and ideas so build off of that community ask questions learn that's how I've learned a lot of my information thank you so much for watching with me today I so appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you next time